the point now of this is we are, we are expanding, as you can see, and as Gustavo would have said, we have diversified now a bit. So we have moved out from the conformity of the, of the postal industry and expanded into the private sector. So diversity means innovation, and that's why we are up here in a, in a, in a bigger group. The idea was since now in the afternoon we have the technical showcase, we said, okay, there should be two parts. The one, the UPU should talk a bit more about what they are doing. I, Kate, you say it nicely, sales is missing. So, I mean, there should be some opportunities where the UPU says, what are we doing? What is the PTC developing? What are we working on? What kind of solutions are out there? that you can actually use as of today. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's not so well known. I mean, you have to explain to people that come to you and say, we don't know how that works, or we don't know, the, is there any solution? Yeah, and then you yeah. say, yes, there's a mobile solution for it, and yeah. suddenly problems are solved. So that's, that's very, very important. Um, so we said in the first part, um, we, we, we look at the UPU solutions. Come up here, Gustavo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great that you join us. <laughs> that's not Swiss time. Um, and, um, and so we said in the second part, um, it, it would be too difficult to bring everybody up here, but we said we want, we want to show how the UPU is diversifying. We want to bring up here really on the stage um, a group of new CC members um, that have joined recently. I mean, as you know, it's the 1st of July. That was the data since when it is possible uh, to, to join. And uh, you, you can read uh, every week now an announcement, or even two announcements per week, um, about companies that are joining. So the private sector is moving strongly into the UPU. And we said, okay, let's bring up, if we talk about showcase in the afternoon, let's bring up to the stage a few of those, um, of those new partners uh, within the UPU system that said, okay, we want to cooperate, we want to be included in the system. So very quickly, who are those companies? Um, we have James Marley here with us. Uh, he's director of enterprise from Sonos. Santosh, you know already, Santosh Gopal from ship to my id standing here. Uh, we have uh, Sol Alavi, the founder of Geomain, who is here with us as well. Um, we have Andri Shapovalov, he's the CEO and co-founder of Stamstack, standing here. Uh, we have Michael Augstein, he's the board member Logistics Natives. And over here. Standing over here, yeah. And uh, Egon Verme, he's the chief operating officer and member of the management board of Eurora. He's standing over here. <laughs> and we said, okay, everybody uh, who, who we invite here on stage should also say, okay, what are we doing? Um, so, why are we joining the UPU Consultative Committee? What are we doing? Who are we? And let's start with James. Please. Why are we joining the UPU? Yeah, and what are you doing? Well, what is Sonos? So, just explain the audience briefly what Sonos stands for, what your solution is about, and... Uh, okay, I, I put something together. Do you want me to go through that, or, or are we doing the slides right now, or are we doing just a general did you Did you send over some slides? Uh, I've sent over one slide. I've got to talk. Do, do, do you that? have one slide yeah. from James? No, no, you can show it via your... No, 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 I'm not going to. I've got my, co my, my okay, talk on here. Okay, but then, please, yeah. Through. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, cool. If there are slides, perfect. Okay, cool. Just it's just it. one slide. Yeah. <laughs> it's just who we are. Slide. <laughs> okay, it's, it's only five minutes, but it's a quick intro. Yeah, please. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor <laughs> to be here. Um, I hope you all had a safe trip and look forward to meeting more of you uh, during the event. I'm James, and I'm the head of enterprise at Zonos. My background is 10 years in California's startup community, followed by a five-year... HL, have I lost my sound? Uh, I'm now back in the world of tech with Zonos and thrilled uh, to be bringing together logistics and technology. So my colleague Tawny is actually going to be presenting tomorrow. Uh, so I thought today I'd just tell you a very quick story. Um, I'll tell it in two parts. Firstly, how the express industry adapted to e-commerce. And secondly, how operators can seize the new e-com opportunity and solve many of the compliance and complexities uh, problems in the process. Now, the journey of Zonos has always been a brilliant reflection of that interaction between e-commerce and logistics. Zonos was founded back in 2009, when online selling was growing fast, marketplaces were all the rage, and e-commerce merchants were adopting new buzzwords like cross-border and next day. In 2009, express carriers were hesitant to embrace e-commerce because of the high cost of residential delivery. They also didn't know how to talk this, to this new customer profile, as Kate talked about earlier. For years, their sales discussions had been in the corner of a warehouse, talking to ops managers about collections, van capacity, fuel surcharges, and general price increases. This new type of customer required all the jargon of logistics to be presented in the context of e-commerce KPIs, like ROAS, return on advertising spend, CLV, customer lifetime value, and AOV, average order value. 
Back in those days, Zonos simply put two and two together because we understood both logistics and e-commerce. We'd go out and sell the big global e-commerce opportunity to the merchant and then talk logistics with the carriers. We sold everything from shipping to local currency, returns, fraud prevention, local payment methods, translation, everything to localize a website globally. It was a great business, and we still have those customers 13 years later. In 2014, the express carriers finally embraced e-commerce. UPS bought iParcel and FedEx acquired Bongo. These acquisitions brought them a customer base. Unfortunately, both companies took a logistics uh, management approach to the tech industry, and neither Bongo nor iParcel exists today. It was at this point that Zonos needed to make a decision. We could either continue with our old business model of selling the full service, which put us in competition with our own suppliers, or we could adapt and turn those suppliers into partners. So we adapted and we began to focus on the technology. So we focused on AI machines, platform applications, and APIs for landed cost calculation, HS code classification, cross-border compliance like denied parties and restricted goods screening. Now, this shift enabled us to remove all the physical and operational limitations of the real world. By focusing on the technology of cross-border, we could expand beyond e-commerce and sell APIs for new customers in manufacturing, industry, and even finance. This shift also meant we could now collaborate with car carrier partners. More importantly, we could do it without diluting the revenue and evicting them from their own commercial relationships. As we all know, express carriers are profit machines. Before they embraced e-commerce, their shipment profile might be $70 per kilogram for a clinical trial shipment going across the Atlantic. In the e-com gold rush, they now found themselves shipping a little black dress on the same lane for just $7 per kilogram. So 2019 saw them begin to adjust and develop major initiatives to remove unprofitable customers. Today, express carriers are still hungry for e-commerce, but they cherry-pick the most profitable, high-value, own-brand customers with the margins to absorb their higher costs, which leaves an enormously underserved majority of e-commerce merchants. These merchants are still looking to go global, but they have no decent options other than consolidators or fulfillment companies, both of which adversely affect cash flow, which ironically is the key to a successful e-commerce business. That's why I'm here. And this now leads us to the second part of my story, which I'll keep brief, sorry. <laughs> there are two major tech opportunities for operators today. The first is compliance APIs for things like ICS2. The second is postal DDP for final mile innovation. I'll briefly mention the first to do with compliance APIs because the second is way more interesting uh, and can also solve the first. Many compliance matters are easily solved by machine learning AI. We can automate intelligent data flow. The measure of an AI's performance is done by its age and, accumu and accumulated learning. After 13 years, and now with the enormous data provided by the United States Postal Service and other partners, Zonos' AI is learning faster than ever. The second option, Postal DDP, is far more interesting, and I'll explain why. Today, merchants have four options for shipping internationally. They can send it DAP with a postal operator or express carrier. They can send it DDP with an express carrier. They can work with a consolidator, or they can work with a fulfillment company. Now, before we go through these briefly, um, it's important to note that international consumers are the most valuable to an e-commerce merchant because they spend more, return less, and, and if the offer architecture is right, they offer the greatest customer lifetime value. Now, let's return to those four options I just mentioned. The first option was DAP with a postal operator or express carrier. Now, this is terrible for a, a merchant because they strangle the most valuable customer base. For over de minimis items, the customer must pay duties and taxes on their own doorstep or buy an app. This is a terrible experience and ensures the lowest customer lifetime value of the most valuable customer base. The second option, DDP through an express carrier, is expensive. Never mind express rates, carrier fees can be 40% of the overall landed cost. The third option is pretty good for large merchants, but bad for postal operators, because they're missing out on the direct revenue and developmental sales opportunities from the most profitable customer base. The fourth option, international fulfillment, is a good one and may well suit enterprise businesses. However, it can mean that the company incurs tax nexus in places like the US and so must now collect and remit sales tax. So there's clearly a demand for a fifth option, a postal DDP solution although it really isn't true DDP, so we call it a landed cost guarantee. There are currently merchants using our 
platform to ship DDP-type shipments from the US into Canada. It works. More importantly, it solves many of the problems of bad data, local tax schemes, and HS codes, because we are providing both the HS codes and the customs and duty, uh, the duty and tax revenue. So how do we do it? Previously, the flow was that the merchant dispatches the shipment, it arrives at the border, the inbound operator collects, the con um, c collects revenue from the consumer by the app or in person, and then the, sh the shipment is delivered. This flow is slow, and it means merchants aren't getting swift delivery or repeat business from international customers. What we're doing is very different. We calculate and collect the full landed cost in the checkout. The merchant then dispatches the shipment. It arrives at the border, and it goes straight out for delivery because Zonos transfers the duty and tax revenue directly to the inbound postal operator. Zonos then invoices the merchant the landed cost that we calculate, and there is no uh, discrepancy, and everything reconciles. By doing this, it means everyone is getting what they want. The merchant gets a guaranteed landed cost and a single invoice. They also get a low-cost, international, commercially attractive solution. We know it's attractive because we've been selling it for the past 13 years. The outbound operator gets a commercially awesome and established solution for the most profitable customer base. The inbound operator gets the duty and tax revenue immediately and doesn't need to hold or store these shipments. They also get awesome ICS2 compliant data and paperwork. There are also benefits for EU and UK remittance, whereby Zonos can become the VAT supplier, thereby negating the requirement to register, report, and remit. For the past 13 years, we've been building NPS scores on the major e-commerce platforms, and so have the top-rated, top-performing applications. Zonos is number one for duty and tax calculation on all platforms. It's ready to go. We just need to plug it into the postal. Now, I'll end here, because I've gone on a little bit too long, sorry. Um, uh, I just wanted to say, as a final kind of summary, we're number one for duty and tax calculation. We are a UPS-ready partner and FedEx CSB approved. We're over 13 years old. We're providing cross-border technology for the United States Postal Service. We have a working PDDP solution, and we want to begin to expand it. Uh, and we're not in this for the short term. We're not just looking to build a company and flip it as quickly as possible. We're a young team, and we're really looking to build. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. <clears throat> So, what is Chiomain about? Will you tell us something? Yeah. Uh, presentation. If we could just watch that video quickly, it's a two minute video, and then I'll start talking after that. Mm -hmm. That's okay? Absolutely. Geomain, Geomain. Geomain, yeah. Yeah, but as Santos, we had already, you made already a presentation, so we. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yes, that's the one. 500 years ago. Persian king Cyrus the Great laid the foundation for modern day logistics when he invented a system for delivering letters and parcels to his citizens. That system evolved over the centuries and today an address is defined typically by five or more lines of text to include unit number, street name, postcode, town and country. Addresses are created by government agencies and pretty much like relatives, you have no choice in what your address is. Geomain changes all this by empowering you to name your address. We capture your GPS coordinates and allow you to dynamically link it to a unique identifier name that you choose. This name is called the Geomain. Geomain gives businesses the opportunity to enhance their brand value and much more. So how does it work? Adam, who lives in Singapore, registers at Geomain. Geo Adam and links it to his home's GPS coordinates. Subsequently, he moves to Hong Kong, where he simply links his new Hong Kong home's coordinates to his geomain. He next moves to London, and here too he captures and links his new home's GPS coordinates to Geo Adam. This makes his geomain his always current address for life. Neat, huh? Imagine simply scanning your geomain QR code or entering it instead of the long form address when booking a ride or navigating on the road, or on forms online and offline, or using your Geomain as your geo-validated ID, adding a much needed extra layer of security to your transactions. Well, imagine no more. Get your unique Geomain now before someone else does. All you need is a Geomain. Thank you for that. Uh, Geomain is essentially a, a universal digital identity. 
Uh, it's something, it's basically an app available on both the Play Stores. You can download that and you can register. It's a bit synonymous with a domain and hence the name Geomain, right? So just like a domain is unique to you and it points to your URL or your website, a Geomain is also unique except and it points to your GPS coordinates, uh, i.e. your physical location, wherever that may be. Um, uh, and because of the very uh, of the very nature of Geomain being a unique digital identity, right? Okay, it's it's essentially a platform, and a lot of different transactions can happen on that, including single sign-ons, uh, uh, you know, unique validations, uh, as the presentation said. Uh, so there are tons and tons of use cases, uh, like when you order <coughs> when you order a taxi, for example, on Uber or something. Uh, we all know that, you know, you need to enter the address and then scroll down, find the right address. A lot of times, you know, we've spoken to ride-hailing ride companies, and they've said that a lot of business is lost primarily because they simply cannot reverse geocode. Most of them use Google APIs, but Google doesn't have every address on the planet, uh, you know, in its database. So uh, in, in, in our case, we actually don't use addresses, we use GPS coordinates instead. And, and, and we are map agnostic, so you could use Google Maps, you could use Here Maps, you could use anything at all. Um, so Geomain uh, is uh, a unique digital identity. We expect that over a period of time, uh, uh, you know, we hope that this is going to replace addresses. It might be very ambitious, but uh, you know, this is what we are hoping for. Um, and we'll. Uh, in answering your earlier question in terms of why we joined the CC. Uh, in short, because we feel that the, that the post office network, right, is the only organization on the planet that actually has the capability and the clout uh, to, uh, you know, work uh, on launching a unique digital identity. And uh, we'll be looking forward to obviously working with the UPU to launch this. Uh, globally, where the post offices would really, in a sense, perhaps you know, reinvent themselves, so they would become providers of a unique digital identity, uh, making themselves relevant for decades to come. Um, the, you know, it's not something that's going to go away very soon. I think more and more people are becoming digitally savvy. The digital transformation is obviously you know happening as we speak, and I don't think it's go, you know it's going anywhere. So. Uh, considering all of that, I think that the UPU is uh, going to be a great partner uh, if they come in and basically help us roll this out uh, along with the network of all the postal operators who obviously would stand to make revenue from this. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, with, I mean, with Geomain, obviously, uh, you know, as, as a universal location platform, what's going to happen is that, you know, it's, it's, it's an open location platform, so a lot of other players will come on and they'll be able to, uh, you know, come up with their own use cases. So we want to make it open to everybody. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I think the UPU uh, would be an ideal partner uh, from a technology perspective as well. If you talk, you know, because earlier we were talking about the UPU, uh, the PTC having their own cloud and all of that stuff. So all of that is stuff that's going to basically give people assurance and the trust factor obviously comes in, which is critical. Perfect. Thank you very much. Andre, can you tell us a bit more about oh, Stamstake? Yes, yes. I kind of feel a little bit, uh, oh, I'd say two and a half years when I first approached Paul Donahue with a letter about the, uh, the NFT stamps, uh, it felt like a little bit of an alien because at that time blockchain was really by far not the buzzword, but uh, after a successful last year uh, of, uh, I would say, mainstream uh, information campaign uh, on NFTs, this uh, uh, technology, I think, is just the right time to adopt by the postal. Uh, which one should I? The green one? Mm -hmm. I guess uh, so. Uh, it's just the right time to start adopting. And uh, uh, these two slides that will follow, they are more focusing on what we offer to the post. They are not about the product itself. Uh, but... Um, So, in short, and this is a challenge to talk about this in short, uh, but what uh, we have a vision, the philately, of having 182 years of existence already, uh, and uh, um, quite a big uh, asset sitting on the shelves of the post, 1,000, oh, sorry, or close to 1 million uh, stamp motifs that are already existing, and of course the new ones are coming out, uh, every year. 
with majority of the posts. This is a great asset to bring into NFT format on blockchain and establish a really good and uh, stable revenue line. The mainstream adoption is not there yet, but the time to start building the ground for that uh, is already now. And uh, as a partner to the postal administrations, to, po to, to postal operators, uh, we understand the challenges that majority of you have, and we are offering the full expertise 24-7 support on all blockchain-related issues at zero investment cost to the post, which makes your onboarding process in a test mode or in a full-scale mode, depends on your uh, readiness and strategy, a really no-risk uh, uh, no exercise and, and really an opportunity. Now, Stump Duck, you know, blockchain is quite diverse, and uh, uh, at some point of time, we were looking also at the art industry to engage, etc. But uh, eventually, the, um, the, the, the decision has come to really focus on one uh, area where there is the biggest uh, potential if we come to, uh, to uh, uh, future sales and, and, and revenues, and, and in general, transforming and evolving, I would say, the, the traditional philatelic market, uh, adding to, to it digital opportunities, and then creating really a cooperation, because this is the most important, the, the, the point number two here, cooperation rather than competition, is, is really important uh, to realize, and this is why we have joined the uh, consultative committee, is really to, I would say, to preach to every post and on all the levels of all the unions, the idea of creating a united uh, blockchain philately market to start with, you can add other possibilities further, but it's only in this uh, type of setup there is the biggest synergies and the biggest uh, revenues, both for the industry and what's more importantly, bo uh, also for the collectors, because they are the ones that are uh, driving the, uh, uh, the demand, and the more uh, engaging, the more rewarding, and the more entertaining environment we can create, and this is what the digital technology in, in NFT format allows us to do, uh, then we have the future of the business and then every, every post will, will benefit. Uh, and, and the last uh, element on, on, the, on this slide that you can see is trust is necessary to establish uh, on both sides. Uh, technology is new, so blockchains are new, regulating environment is, is really not there yet, I would say. And there is a lot of controversy in media about is it good, is it bad, is it scam, uh, is it scam or is it legal, etc. Uh, so uh, the, what, what's necessary from the post industry is really to engage into understanding the technology and then advocating for it. Because this is the future. Believe it or not, stamps are really aging. They are perfect in terms of collecting, but they are really aging. And this is the way to make them young and really make them available to everybody from a, you know 18 years old because you know buy, you can buy earlier but legally you can uh, buy with crypto when you are 18 uh, and uh, and you know until the 120 years you can easily collect it and just the, the the formula that we have put together is in two words is a utility value uh, fulfillment so for the stamps collectors uh, in addition to traditional collect and trade formula that have existed for ages, uh, we are adding the extra value benefits uh, that are uh, uh, that that will be available for the collector's lifetime. And uh, uh, so far, we have already the three postal operators have already trusted uh, our approach, our business model, the La Poste, uh, the Côte d'Ivoire. Bhutan Post Corporation and Botswana Post, these are already on board uh, with us. And uh, uh, we are, after two years already, talking to many postal administrations and explaining uh, <coughs> what it can be and what, you, what, what they can get out of it. We are expecting, I would say, quite a big number adding on boarding uh, uh, to Stampsdag by 2025. And I... Uh, Finishing this, I invite you to 
visit the platform and become a little bit uh, NFT stamp collectors for you and for your children to come because like I said the benefits that we are uh, in, that we have already introduced and will be developing further the whole package will be uh, able to pass to your generations as well so in this way philately really becomes an eternal in digital it cannot perish you cannot burn it it stays forever perfect. thank you very much perfect thank you thank you very much I would now like to ask Micha, tell us about Logistics Natives, please. Yes, uh, why not? Uh, yeah, you're lovely welcome. Um, yeah, you're lovely welcome. I have also a presentation. If you can switch uh, directly yeah. to the second page because we're losing so much time. Uh, so because it's the first page, as you can see, it's nothing important. Well, then we go to the second one. Perfect. So we are an international network of logistics, but in combination that we also uh, take care of the modern commerce. This is very important for us. And uh, yeah, well, at it, the it's end, working it now, works. Oh, now it's working. It's working, yeah, thank you very much. Um, we are working very practical. This is uh, important for us and pragmatic and always project based and project solving. This is very important for us. Um, yeah, I'm just one guy over here, but we represent actively 30,000 SMEs in Germany. And uh, yeah, we act for them uh, for economic and legal. Uh, things and we are as you can see we are a network so we are as network connected with 18 other networks 12 of them are in Germany and others are acting in Europe or in the whole world like US UPU for example you're also one network for us where we cooperate with and uh, yeah as we're talking with you uh, or we're talking about UPU we are supporting you also with e-commerce projects uh, for Africa and, and South America for example and um, yeah what we are trying to bring in as a CC member, because we've been a CC member beginning of this year, is to share with you the actual market needs from our point of view, because all the members that we have, all the, the SMEs that we represent, uh, we know what they need. And we're trying to do this in a very uh, positive way, very creative, and uh, with a good motivation. This is also very important. Uh, yeah, just a, f a few words to me. Why to me? Because I'm also a member of this. Uh, logistic natives, and um, you can visit me at the booth uh, 4010 in the next three days. And I have one special uh, project that we could discuss about is uh, Hub as a Service, because we are a startup for logistics, but we are not only a cloud farm or server farm, we have a warehouse. Uh, we touch the shipments, we consolidate the, sh consolidate the shipments, and uh, we are like, let's say, in, in a very innovative uh, uh, hub. So use us as Hub as a Service. Uh, if you don't have a hub on your own here in, in Germany or Europe. And the next one, please. I think it was below three minutes. Perfect. This was Thank important you. for me. <laughs> <laughs> Egon, Aurora. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Very glad to be here. Thank you, UPO, for opening the doors. So mm -hmm. if there is a chance and the door is open, we try to sneak in and, uh, and see how it goes. Uh, my background is actually, I, I have worked mo more than 20 years for government, so, and um, uh, more than 15 years for tax and customs, so, and, um, and I think Estonia is one of the countries where, where people want to pay taxes, or at least declare them, so, because it's so easy, you take up, out your phone, it takes you 30 seconds and your income tax return is done. And this is something we are actually thinking uh, with Aurora, what we want to do. Uh, we are building up uh, compliance and customs uh, software solution and uh, what, what we see is actually the data, data set is more or less the same and different requirements that are coming are telling you you need to send this data to someone in, in some certain format and this is what we are building up in, in, in Aurora. Uh, that we take care of all the compliance issues and you don't need to worry about it. So our team is very much focused. We have tax and customs people, compliance people, logistics people, and of course, IT people. But very important part of our business is actually, uh, our products are coming actually from scientist, scientific work. So everything that we are building up, we are doing it together with universities. So, so, and, and we see that this is the future. 
because data and data handling uh, and without machine learning, artif artificial intelligence, I think it's, it's not important. Even uh, Elon Musk said that the most dangerous, uh, dangerous tool in the world is actually artificial intelligence. Uh, I believe it, but I believe in it in a good way. So, and this is what we are doing every day. We are building different products uh, uh, gradually to uh, fulfill the customer needs. Why we joined UPU is actually because we are already working with some of post organizations already. They are using some of our solutions already. So that's why we see that this is opportunity. We can learn from you very much and vice versa. We can give you the technology and we can be very adaptive. We work also with big customers and it's not only the IT that you plug in for API or you use different solutions, but it's very much actually what is behind how you change your business model. And this is very important. And uh, when we are working with big customers, we, we, we know what it means to change, to make a change in the organization. It's not just plug in and, and that's it. It's, it's very much depends what happens with your business processes. We are, we are, we are a global company. We, we, we are in the States, we are in, in Europe, we are in the Middle East, we are now in, in China, opening now a new office also in Singapore. So we, we try to cover all the, all the regulations that are uh, regarding the cross-border compliance uh, globally. This is what we, what we are doing. So. And, um, and our customers are worldwide, so basically. But our customers are e-sellers, platforms, logistical companies, postal companies, and everybody can have a part of our solutions or take the whole solution from ourselves. I, I see that, and, and you, you know better that uh, what are the challenges for the postal world anyway. So you need to digitalize. There are different reasons. Uh, so, some countries you, you, need to, you need to cut the budget, but you still need to uh, deliver so, so basically, the, and the needs from regulations are coming also that you need to digitalize. There is no escape from that. And I believe this is the right way. So like the, before the session, we talked about the customer happiness and, and this is in the end, it's, it's the most critical thing. There are different, different products what we, what, what we are offering. So uh, basically, yes, we can allocate the ages code, we can calculate the tax, we can do DDU, DDP, tax collection, but we also have built up the customs integrations. And I think uh, this is the biggest uh, value chain, what we, what we see our customers are uh, looking forward because what has changed, especially in Europe, it's, it's difficult uh, to to have solutions uh, for the whole Europe, European countries to have connections with every European custom. So they are acting differently, the languages are different. So this is what we are offering. And my colleague, Paul Scratchley, he will be also here in Expo and he's giving a speech on 19. So if you are more interesting, uh, go listen to, to him or come to our booth and we are happy to work with you and uh, open uh, as our doors are open as your doors are open. Thank you very much. So in, in the morning, we were discussing <clears throat> about the advantages that uh, opening up of the union brings to the UPU and to the postal world in general. Now we have said here we take a slightly different angle. Now we have here the PTC still. Um, so the question to you, you see all this innovation or these new companies coming into the, into the UPU. Where do you see now for the PTC in particular advantages? Um, we, does it work? It works. Yes. Yeah. No? Yeah, just, okay. just okay. go on yeah. talking okay. and then it will. Uh, no, well, we see a lot of opportunities here uh, with those companies. Um, we, at the PTC, so we develop solutions. We develop um, uh, solutions for the, uh, let's say, the, the core business of the, of the designated operators. Um, but we do not have, I mean, all the expertise <laughs> these guys uh, have. Uh, here in uh, in the domains, and, and that's where it could bring some values to to the, to the operators, uh, because we need to enrich, we need to enhance our systems. Uh, again, we don't have the expertise, we don't have uh, enough resources to develop everything. So I think that's where we need uh, cooperation and integration with uh, with these companies uh, in different domains, 
and, and again, for the benefits of the post. And mm -hmm. all the needs actually are coming from the post. Um, the PTC, so we are different from a private company. We don't decide uh, what uh, we implement and then post just have to use what we have decided they use. Uh, UPU, it's, it's different. Uh, post decide what they want in our systems and we have to listen to them. Uh, actually, it has started already. Uh, we've already, we have already implemented some APIs uh, from uh, Aurora. Uh, but again, because Post uh, were involved in this uh, decision. So, and I think it should continue. And I think with these uh, now uh, companies in the consultative committees, I think there will be more discussions uh, mm -hmm. and we get more from, from them. So that's the innovation and the diversification you were talking about, right? Uh, I, I see, I mean, a lot of advantage. I think the consultative committee and the private sector should start to see the, the UPU as, as everybody's saying, as a partner, as a partnership. And in a partnership, there is always uh, two, two sides of, uh, of the work that you have to do. It's not just, uh, I think we have to get out from the old model, like wait and see. I'm your partner, I wait for, I'm waiting for you to contact me with somebody. I think as a partner, you need to invest, you need to invest time, you need to invest resources and, uh, on both sides, and uh, eventually th there, there is a win-win situation. And, uh, and when we are all in this uh, rowing in the same direction, I think definitely th there will be better outcomes in the future. Mm -hmm. So now a quick to the table, if we <laughs> um, <coughs> because we, time is running out, but a statement from each one, maybe two points or three points. So if we, if we look ahead, I mean now, 1st of July opening, you all come into the, into the process. Um, it's, it's a yearly subscription if you want. So, um, I mean, you will make a decision year by year um, whether it makes sense for you to, 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 to participate in the process further or not. Um, but what, what, in your opinion, are the two or three key elements that will this cooperation make thrive? So, thrive. Oh, okay. Right. So maybe we start here and go the way down. Well, well, at the end, what, what we think is that uh, we would like to give all those merchants a voice mm -hmm. uh, because we know what's up in the market. Uh, and and I don't, I don't talk, I'm not talking about an ASOS on Zalando or on, 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 about you or whatever. No, no, we're talking about the smaller ones, the mid size. So what solutions do they need in the e-commerce, for example? Uh, and this is what we would like to share with you, those informations. That has to be uh, because they need solutions, and maybe you and all the others could provide those solutions. And uh, as Gustavo mentioned before, uh, the new technologies are going up like maniac. So we have to take part. Santosh. I think being plugged into UP is a. You need a microphone, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. I think being plugged into UP network itself will give a lot of scale and credibility. Mm -hmm. And it's more about identifying the right opportunities and how to work with UPU. Because when I saw the PTC slide, there's so much of software. Four months into consolidating committee, I still don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. We need to get educated and see where does our solution fit in. How do we work with UPU? And that's a learning process for us as well. So if we have something unique and which is scalable, I think working with UPU and finally business and opportunities and money is what is important. Great. Thank you. Uh, you have uh, yeah, yeah. Now, I just uh, uh, referring to the to the conversation I had uh, last week with Alexander in Bern. Uh, I think for for uh, the the key important part will be also to have the work of the consultative committee done in a in a business way. So it has to be a deal making playground where everybody cooperates with everybody, finds the ways, and eventually the industry benefits and everybody participating in it as well. Deal making, so Deal this making. is key. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So I, I think uh, it's time also for the postal operators to take the opportunity and maybe something that might not make sense in your, in your country, maybe it will make sense at the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and unless you try, then you don't know what could be the outcome. Uh, that's what is innovation about. Sometimes you start with the initial value proposition and then afterwards you find out that actually was not the right one and then you change, you evolve. 
you interact with the, the company and then eventually you end up with the, the right value proposition. And this is how many times the, some of the best companies in the world not today exist. Amazon and Microsoft, I mean, the, the, the initial value proposition was not uh, uh, to provide AWS services or the initial proposition of Microsoft was to, to have uh, uh, diverse uh, office. I mean, it was more operating system, but now um, they have a diversified portfolio that there was not the initial proposition. So I think the post, they also could take a chance and, you, and try the, the stamps AQ, ship to my D, Aurora, give it a try. And then afterwards, if it makes sense, well, go for it. <laughs> Egon. I would look at, at that like uh, when you are opening the stores, it's like uh, rain and then you have mushrooms. Like it's, it's your own startup world of UPU. So, and some companies, uh, they, they will, they will uh, live with it and uh, will continue and some will disappear. But, but overall, you, you will take this experience and, uh, and companies like Aurora, we are very much IT company and we can help you with that. You, this is not your burden. You don't need to focus very much. So, and, uh, it's a good, great opportunity on both sides, as I mentioned, that we can learn a lot of, from you and uh, we can help you a lot of with uh, how to actually digitalize and, uh, and make change in your organization. Stefan. Yes. Um, for me, on, on, the, on the IT side, uh, th 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 there are two points that are important. Uh, it's regulations and, and standardization. For me, that's uh, on the IT side, that this is extremely important. You can come with the, the best solution in your domain. Uh, if it does not comply with the re UP regulations, there's no way uh, to, to implement it. So mm -hmm. it has to be discussed, it has to be uh, validated, implemented. And standardization, because again, uh, there are different companies, there are competitors here. Uh, if you come with different solutions, it will be difficult for the post, uh, if you implement uh, one or the other, and uh, they, can, uh, they cannot uh, talk each other, so that, that will be a, an issue. So that's why we need, all our systems are based on that, uh, regulations and UPU standards. So that's the two uh, important points. On I that. think that is important, yeah, yeah. To, to bring it up. James? I think ICS2 and, you know, a lot of these complexity, uh, compliance complexities need to be solved quickly and decisively by partnering with uh, tech companies um, that, that are out there. Um, but I think, kind of longer term, I'd really like to help Postal operators enable them and you know, enable these small and medium sized businesses to really kind of win back some of that volume from the express carriers and use the fantastic resources these postal operators have available to them. Uh, and I think it just takes you know, the right commercially attractive solutions uh, to make that happen. Uh, and so I think you know, partnering with UPU and, and, and tech companies uh, will, will really help that happen. Mm -hmm. So please, yeah, you need the mic. <laughs> Um, I think every relationship uh, synergies are, you know, a very important factor. So, uh, in with with the UPU opening up with the consultative council and everything, I think a lot of members will obviously look to have a mutually beneficial relationship, um, and that obviously goes for us as well. Uh, we feel that with our 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 product, uh, you know, the UPU would uh, be able to remain relevant for a long, long time to come because it, it, it's part of the whole digital transformation, uh, which the UPU is obviously, uh, you know, uh, currently very focused on. Uh, so we look forward to working with uh, the UPU on this, and obviously we hope that the other, the other members of the Consultative Council will also obviously contribute in kind in any way that they can. Perfect, thank, thank you. you very much. So I think that was kind of useful that we gave a snapshot really on a, on a few companies, very diverse, different kinds of solutions that will one way or the other contribute uh, to the postal ecosystem. Just a question to Walter and Alex, by the end of the year, how many, how many new consultative uh, comedy members do you think we are going to have? I mean, it would be ideal to have a lot of private Thanks. sector parties involved, so w w what is the outlook there? That's a very good question. Currently, we are moving uh, with uh, one new member a week. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, by the, the POC and CA, we will have doubled. The most important uh, question, of course, for Marianne is that we made ends meet. <laughs> very important. Um, and uh, if that goes on, then uh, we will have more members than the POC. Okay. So um, uh, 42 and, uh, well, the sky is the limit. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, but 
I would like to take this opportunity to point out to one very important um, topic. I mean, this is a historic, historic situation right now. Yeah? There are private sector members, and they joined the UPU. This is, this is huge. Uh, for me, it's, I'm, I'm very happy to see this. I took lots of photos. This is, this is really great. Um, and, uh, and we made it happen. The decision was taken at the UPU Congress. Uh, it, took us, it took us now three months to double our membership. Um, and uh, this is a huge impact. And I can't thank you uh, enough for this uh, because I, I have the feeling that what has been decided by the member countries um, is now actually paying off. Um, the UPU is open. There's clear contrib contribution. I see at least two pairs of, of fierce competitors here. This is, this is very good. They are standing on the same st stage and talking about the same topics. That's great. Um, and that's exactly what the designated operators need. They need choice. They need high competence. And it needs to be fully standardized and hopefully very soon certified. Yeah? So that designated operators know that um, these people are coming with a fully certified portfolio, which is trustworthy and is actually monitored and highly transparent on the backbone of the UPU. Thank you for the trust given to the consultative committee at a situation where we couldn't offer much. But with you, we already can offer a lot. And this will further move on, I'm sure. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Walter. I would, I would be surprised if uh, after this speech, by the end of the year, you won't have maybe 100 members or something like this. <laughs> no, but I have to close the session here now. It was really to give this flavor, to have this short discussion. We, I think, or the UPU will certainly open up more and more possibilities to make your vo voice heard in the, in, the, in the wider sector. I think that's extremely important. Um, so thank you very much for joining us here, closing this session. But so let's close the session. <laughs> But before we close, but before we close uh, the, the, the forum here, it is the di Deputy Director General again uh, who, who has this job. Please, Marianne. I'll be brief again. Uh, just a quick reply. I was in a way challenged by Miss uh, um, uh, Moss, uh, uh, Kate uh, from IMAC. When you asked uh, if UPU can go along with private uh, uh, sector, in terms of innovation. And my honest, I was always honest and transparent answer is unfortunately not. Because you are simply too fast. But you have our commitment and uh, I, my promise as well that uh, uh, I can guarantee you that we can do it faster and better. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, Happy to be part of this historical moment, uh, uh, Walter. Thank you for sharing. And uh, let me uh, say thank you also to Bernhard, who did an uh, excellent job. So you deserve an applause. <laughs> so now the takeaways. Um, today we had a very well-rounded discussion on the power of partnerships for the transformation of our sector. There is no doubt that we have worked together, the UPU, postal operators, and private sector partners. We can land ourselves on the bright side of this tipping point of digital transformation. Based on the discussion in this room, I would like to highlight a few points from our discussion today. Our partners in the private sector can help the UPU and its members to move faster, and we do need to move faster. On the other hand, the UPU is in a position to make sure all the necessary conditions are met to maximize that innovation. Standardization and the right regulation will be essential to ensuring we set the tone for transformation of the sector as a whole. The UPU is the place to coordinate this work. As my colleague have outlined, education is another key part of innovation. Posts need to be aware of the technologies that are out there, and they also need to know how to use them. The UPU helps bring all players together to build this awareness. At the UPU, we work closely with our members to ensure our solutions are fit for their purpose. We provide training and consult to adapt solutions to their unique needs. No one should be left behind in this transformation. 
the show, this showcase has opened a dialogue on how we can help each other, and we want to continue this dialogue. The consultative committee is the doorway to ensure we keep talking to each other. I encourage you to consider joining to make sure that we remain partner on our shared journey of postal transformation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marion. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Also, thank you to everybody uh, that joined us remotely, and have a nice remaining day. Thank you. <clears throat>